Welcome. Manchester United, ladies and gentlemen, have crashed out of the Europa League and have lost yet again to Sevilla. And I don't want to say this is football heritage, but guys, it's kind of turning out to be. We've had some big losses this season. This isn't the first time United have been thrashed. Let's face it. They conceded four to Brentford. They conceded six to Manchester City. They even conceded seven. Seven goals to Liverpool. But this has to rank right up there, guys. This is one of the most pathetic performances I haven't seen just from United this year. It's one of the most pathetic performances I've seen, period, this year. I watched Leeds the other day against Liverpool concede six. And I tweeted out that this is one of the, the, the most, like, it's just the team basically laying down and, and letting the other team have their way with them. No pause. Play that shit. This is just as embarrassing, in my opinion, as what we just watched uh, midweek from them. Th this is absolutely ridiculous. But it shouldn't be shocking for anyone, to be honest with you. I think a lot of these players have, if you haven't noticed at this point, you're absolutely blind, but shown their true colors. Today was not a question of ability, you guys, or, or tactics, or one manager out schooling the other. This is a question of 11 players, quite simply, not being up for the up for the, the game. In football, right, we can talk about skills. We can talk about players being good enough. I think me and Ken both agree, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree, that the technical level at United is shockingly low for a team that should be much, much better than they really are. But forget about the technical side of it. I don't even want to think of the mental side of it in terms of footballing IQ and knowing where to be and being smart during the game. Football, it's very core, guys. 11 v. 11, 5 v. 5, 3 v. 3, no matter what it is, is about earning the right to play. And too many times, the players on this team don't even like put up a challenge to earn the right to play. They, they have this mentality that they just deserve to be in games just because they play for Manchester United, just because they make 150, 200,000 pounds a week. But today, they were basically not just outclassed, not just outplayed, but outfought. And it's becoming too regular of an occurrence. Every single time that things get techie for this team, they basically just lay down and let the other team walk over them. And it would be different if this was like a completely new team. Like, for example, I got a lot of stick recently for saying that Arsenal at their very core are a soft team. But I kept saying in that video, I kept saying this team in particular, I believe has a new mentality. This team, you can't say has a new mentality because it's still most of the same players. And that's where we go back to the manager. If he is to continue giving new contracts to the likes of Luke Shaw, to the likes of David De Gea, to the likes of Marcus Rashford, to the likes of Harry Maguire, Lindelof, players who have consistently been part of these maulings, been part of these, these teams that just stop fighting after one nil down, then Eric Ten Hag will suffer the same fate as Oli. He'll suffer the same fate as Jose Mourinho. He'll suffer the same fate as Louis van Gaal. He'll suffer the same fate as David Moyes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Today was coming, in my opinion, and I think United are in for a few more thrashings with this core of players. So... I'm really upset right now, but at the same time, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. What more can you expect? When players show you who they really are, you believe them. This is the same players that last season had mauling after mauling after mauling. And we laughed when Rennick said that this team needs open heart surgery. Rennick was a crap coach. But one thing he got spot on about this team is that there are too many guys who, to take an NBA quote, they're, they're, they're bus riders. They're not bus drivers. They're just along for the ride. When the team is doing well, they look great. But with the minute that the team needs characters, needs personality to stand up and become held accountable, they show who they really are. Cam, take it away, bro. That's all I can really say. <sighs> Yo, uh, you, you were burning there. You were burning there. But listen, first and foremost, first and foremost, before we speak about everybody, <clears throat> I want people to go back to the last episode that we did of this show and go and check the comments. Go and check the comments. Cam's is so reactionary. One second he thinks that it... they were getting on to me. Listen, they were getting on to me in them comments when I said Sevilla is going to be difficult and what happened in the game is a disgrace. I spoke about Ten Hag. They were angry. They were complaining. Listen, today there's nobody is 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 free of what happened today. Nobody because this is a pattern. So first and foremost, we can speak about the manager. Secondly, we can speak about the players. But let's, you said, you said a lot, right? You said a lot. But if you look at what's happened consistently through the season on a way from home, first and foremost, in the big games, may not have been battered every single game in big away games. Listen, that's an indictment on the manager, first and foremost. Yes, Absolutely. there was injuries. And yes, we'll speak about certain players, 100%. 
But if it's something's a pattern, then it's an indictment on the manager. You got battered 5-2 by Sevilla, who are 13th in the league. Now, listen, I don't really care about all that because in the Europa, we know they're demons, right? And if you go to when we got the draw, I was like, damn, that's the one team I didn't want, Sevilla. Because, and the arrogance, what gets on me mad is the arrogance. It's the arrogance. Oh, Sevilla, easy, piss easy draw. We're going to the final. We're doing this. We're doing that. Bro, this Manchester United team, you can't overlook anybody. You can't overlook anybody. That's the damn fact. Because these are not good enough, bro. Man United, when, since when were Man United good enough that we can start talking like that? Is it still 30 days? Are we competing for titles? No, we're not. We're not doing none of that. Do you know what I mean? So all of this arrogance that comes where it's just like we're going to walk through Sevilla. Bro, it's cap. It's silliness. It's absolute silliness. And this is why, yeah, when we were talking in the other episode the other day about City might go do the treble and we were complete. What did I say to you, bro? I don't care about City doing the treble because it's not even like Man United are competing. Why do men mm. care about that stuff? Oh, we don't want City to win the treble um, because it was it's going to wipe away our, our legacy. What, the legacy that we have been trashing for the last 10 years? Why do you care if City wiped that out? Why, why do you not care? I'm confused. Why do you not care if Man City do it? We've done it ourselves. We've, we've destroyed our own legacies. Don't, let's not talk about Man City doing it. Man United have done it. So all of this talk about focusing on, oh, we don't want City, bro, it's stupid. It's, it's stupidity, bro. Mm. Stupidity. I don't really give a shit about that stuff. Do you know what I mean? But back to Ten Hag, firstly, because I don't want to speak about him later on. He needs to pattern this stuff. And this is what I'm saying, right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing I said to um, when, when we had Jose Mourinho. And in the first season, it was a good little first season, whatever. And in the summer, I was like, I wanted to see what happened. After that summer, I was started to get worried. Listen, I'm telling you now, if we have not made a massive overhaul this summer, then I'll be Ten Hag out before a ball has even been kicked next season. And I'm dead serious. If we have not overhauled this squad, if a lot of these players are not gone and we have not signed about six players, I'll be Ten Hag out from the summer before the sum, before the before a ball has been kicked. I'm, and I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious because we can't we can't go into next season doing this. We can't. Luke Shaw, New Deal. Um, Luke Shaw, New Deal. Martial been at the club eight years. All you're doing is talking about how much you love him. David De Gea getting a new deal. Bro, this is poison, bro. Mm. This is poison. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're, I can't believe this guy's about to sign a new deal, David De Gea. And um, we're going to speak about him. But I'm being serious, bro. If I don't see ruthlessness, then we've just got a yes man in charge and we haven't got somebody that wants to take Manchester United to the top. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. I'm seeing a lot of the same players do the same things. You are a new, you are a new manager. You've had a season to analyse these guys. You've had a season to understand what you want to do going forward. If you sit there and turn around and say, you are still good going forward with David De Gea, Martial's and these type of players, you are not a serious Manchester United manager, bro. You're just a re like the rest of them. It's, it's the reality, bro. We've done this before. Jose Mourinho won us the Carabao Cup and Europa League. So let's not act like, like Ten Hag is doing something special. He's doing well. He's doing a good job. He's, he's won us a trophy after six years. He's doing a good job a little bit. But there's big, big flaws. There's big, big flaws that we can't be ignored. Do you know what I mean? Because we're going to sit here and talk about all these players. But for some reason, everyone treats their managers like, they're, like it's their baby. Everyone treats managers like it's their... Like, it's, um, like if you mention the manager, you hate the club. No. The manager's just as responsible as the players. You guys feel all good about talking about this player, that player, having an agenda against this player, against that player. But when it comes to the manager, hey, nobody speak about him, nobody speak about him. No, that's not how it works, bro. That's not how it works. So listen, as I said, I'm all good with Ten Hag right now. But if there's not big changes in the summer, before the ball has even been kicked, I'll know if I'm in or out. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? So we can start getting into the players, but... He and I want to see what he says. I want to see what he says at the end of this game because, bro, it's a pattern now. We're getting destroyed mm. away from home, destroyed. And listen, the thing is, we weren't getting destroyed under any other manager away from home. That's so we true. can't turn around and just say, do you know what I mean? Like these same players weren't getting battered away from home every single game, bro. Do you know under I mean? Oli, they had the best away record in the league, bro. Yeah, and listen, I'm not here to, to big up Oli or anything, only that, yeah, yeah. only that nonsense because he was he was a dead manager. But all I'm mm -hmm. saying is, 
in these situations, this is a pattern. Three nil, bro. Anyway, listen, listen. We'll get into we'll get into the players now, but I'm saying what I'm saying, man. These players have got soft underbellies. Listen, God is giving. We are giving. Everyone is giving Ten Hag the opportunity to see the players in the light. And this is when I won't feel sorry for him. He is seeing the players in the light, bro. I agree. They can't handle it. They can't handle the pressure. They can't handle the big games. They can't. As, unless you're at Old Trafford, they can't handle it, bro. They're soft. Everyone cooked you for saying this week, for saying Arsenal. This is a soft team. I agree. Man United are soft. Manchester United are soft. Don't talk, let's not forget about other teams. Manchester United are a soft team, bro. Because they got battered. Everywhere they go. What's that song? Everywhere they go. Manchester United, get back. Bro, that's what happens. We get battered every sing- everywhere we go, bro. Mm. So let's, let's see. Let's see. Like I said, bro, I think at, at football at its very core, forget about the tactics, forget <clears throat> about technical ability, forget about all that stuff. You have to earn the right to play, as cliche as that sounds, as Brexit as that might sound. You forget about even playing Sevilla. You play against Nottingham Forest, you play against Watford, you play against Sheffield United, you're playing against 11 men, bro. <laughs> that football is very core. It's about working hard and all that stuff. And, and these guys, like you say, everywhere they go, forget about losing the tactical battle. Forget about not being as good as Manchester City. They don't work half as hard as Manchester City. You look at the best teams in the world. And other than the fact that they have amazing players, of course, and they have some top managers, they have workers. They have, they have guys who will put their... Their life on the line. You look at Manchester City, the last two games against Bayern. Uh, of course, we see the Upa Kano mistakes. We see the brilliance of Erling Haaland. But you saw defensive masterclass. You saw guys putting their body on the line. Ruben Diaz. You look at Bernardo Silva, five foot five, basically like a, a B around the pitch. United has guys, bro, that just go through the motion. I don't want to go at specific players today because I think they were all garbage. But just to go at one, right? Aaron Juan Bisaka plays the game like it's in slow motion. He plays the game like there's not 11 other players on the pitch. Like United can just kind of breeze through games. He's just one of 11. He's the one I'm going to pick out for this example because he plays like there, there's no one watching. You look at Ericsson, it's the same thing. You look at Sancho, it's the same thing. It's because these players are spoiled, bro. At, at their very core, they're spoiled. They get paid more than anybody else on the pitch. They think because they've made it at United, that's basically the pinnacle of their career. And they take things for granted. Yeah, but listen, one thing about Man United, yeah? Every single time we lose, we talk about other teams wanted it more. Other teams outran us. How about you guys just be good on the ball? How about that? Of course, that? of course. How but about, Tim, we're playing against, we're about, playing against guys, Sevilla, who are 13th in the league, bro. You shouldn't have to be maestros on the ball to beat Sevilla, who are 13th in the league, bro. They but, outran United, the bro. Do you see the way they were pressing? Do you see the way they were on it? If you of had course. good football play. If you had good football, bro, the thing is, look, not everything has to be a battle. The reason why we always have these conversations is because we don't have good enough players, bro. Of course, Every single of course. Time, bro, bro, how many, okay, you're talking about City, yeah? Um, um, you're talking about City's um, pressing and all that type of stuff or how they battle. But how many times do you walk away from the game saying, you know what, City out-battled that team? No, you don't walk away from it. No, you of walk course, away from they're, they're they control that game. They bust right. the game. We don't do that. Everything has to be a fight. Everything has to be about. We walk away from football matches saying that team wanted it more. How about you guys just be good footballers but, but, on Kim, the ball? Kim, we know they're not good footballers, but we know they are not good footballers. We, we That's very evident to us, right? We know Sabitzer is a crackhead on the ball. We know Fred is a crackhead on the ball. We know Aaron Wan-Bissaka can't play football. We understand no, that. Include, include Casemiro in there. Honestly, in we, there. we know United doesn't have good players, but that's my whole point. If you don't have good players, the bare minimum... Is that you work hard, is that you put in a shift. Sevilla not only outplayed United, outworked United. Bro, that's the bare minimum they couldn't even get that done. That's all I'm saying. We understand United can't play football like City or like Arsenal. They don't have the players. They scored five goals without a repeat from my United. Five goals. Five goals, bro. People were talking about last week. Oh, it was just two own goals. And again, I want everyone to go to the last episode and look at them comments. And if you guys think you can delete them comments, I screenshotted all of you as well. I will put it on our next episode. I swear down, you've been screenshotted. So there's no point of deleting it. There's no point, right? All right, cool. First and foremost, let's get into De Gea, please. Look, there's, I, there's a tweet. I, there's a tweet. Um, there's. I was on stoppage time. This was actually... Five years ago, to be honest, five years ago on stoppage time, yeah. And I'm talking about David De Gea. And at that point, I'm saying David De Gea is overrated and his stock has dropped. He's not a good goalkeeper, blah, 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 right? We're still here and he's about to get a new deal. 
How long's De Gea been at the club? He signed for Man United in 2011. 12 years of David De Gea. Listen, mate, you got your little clean sheet record. You got your Sir Matt Busby, whatever, awards. Thank you for your services. Please leave. Please leave. And this is why I'm on Ten Hag. Because why is this top contract getting renewed? And if people say, oh, it's a club thing, whatever. Cool. Then he has to be Manchester United's number two next season. If he is Manchester United's number one next season, this guy is not... We, we're not progressing. Man United are not a serious team if David De Gea is the number one next season. And then Ten Hag comes out and listen, I know a lot of people are going to say don't listen to Ten Hag in the presses. I get it because Manjem just talked to bring up people. But when you're going and saying, you just gave David De Gea the biggest lift by saying nah, do you know what? He answered to flex. Nah, De Gea's a complete goalkeeper. You just said that about David De Gea just as he's going back into Spain, you know, giving him the big confidence boost. And that's how he repays. That is how he repays. There's no saving this guy. There's no saving this guy. You can't even perform after your manager come out and publicly back to you and said you are a complete goalkeeper. Now, nah, you can't go to the trenches with David Gea, bro. You can't go through the trenches with David Gea. What he did today, we were talking about Opa Meccano yesterday. This is the easily, this is easily the worst performance in Europe. For, for a very, very, very long time, bro. First goal, Maguire calling for the ball, right? And the reason why I, I spend my time talking about people like De Gea is because he's staying at the club. Maguire, mate, good luck. You're not staying next season. But when you look at De Gea, yeah, that pass, first of all, people are saying Maguire called for it. Yes, he did. Maguire's clueless for that as well, and we'll get into that. But David De Gea, people actually look at the pass quality, the ball is bouncing. How is the ball bouncing? How, how? How is the ball bouncing? You have the whole range of the pitch. You can see everything. You know what I mean? You can see everything. Maguire's doing this. His body shape is terrible. You still give him a bouncing ball. And then that goes and happens. Chuckle bros at the back over there. Then the second goal, looping over. What the hell is going on? How did that go in? How did that go? Yo, 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 yo. How did that go in? How? How, bro? How did that go in? And in the third goal, it's oh just... Oh, my it's God. Awesome. Come on. At this point, you're sold. You sold. You, 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 you've sold. That's, it. That's all it is. You just, you're selling us out in moments like that. You are selling us out. Like, it's unacceptable. Bro, the ball's coming. You're trying to control it. You're falling over it. You're falling over it. <sighs> And but this is what is kills people. me about De Gea, right? What kills me about De Gea, right? Is De Gea came into the league in 2011. He's not, not improved. To, not, he, 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 he came into the league in 2011. I remember his debut against West Brom like it was yesterday. He came into the league unable to claim crosses and command his penalty box. We all knew he was a liability in there. We called him too thin. He came into the league unable to play from the back of his feet. He came into the league unable to come off his line and command his, his, his area. 12 years later, he is not improved at any of those attributes, bro. 12 he's years. Not he's not improved. Over a decade. And he's, the, he's, he's just improved. as bad at every single one of those things I just named. He's not improved. Every single time I say out of the five things a goalkeeper is meant to have, De Gea only has one of them. Only one of them. And that's shot stopping. And lately, his, his shot stopping is all right. Mid. It's all right. No, no, no. no. It's, it's mid. Since 2018. Since the World Cup, when Ronaldo banged the hat-trick on his head, which, by the way, two of those goals were probably his fault, he has been mid at shot-stopping. Mid. His, his machine every hype. stat is mid. Bro, I know Perez pulled the plug, bro, about fax machine weren't working. He popped that plug last second. I'm telling you. He said, yo, hold on. No, no, no. I ain't sanctioning this one. I, I swear to you, bro. Oh, bro, I don't know, man. David De Gea, I don't even want to speak because you see us course. guys, you see us guys, right, on this platform, we don't abuse people in it. We don't call people dickheads. We don't call people this. We don't call people that. But listen, the the the, the feeling I have to De Gea in my heart will make me say some absolutely crazy things. So I need to move on from the De Gea conversation because we still, I got to be professional. Because, bro, I swear to you, bro, I've like, it's been years of this. It's been years of this. 12, oh, listen, let's move on. Let's move on to other players, man. If I speak on that guy, bro, I'm with you. I'll get in big trouble, bro. 
I don't I don't like attacking anybody's personality or their credibility or their character, but that that guy, I'm with you, bro. I'll lose my job if I speak on that guy. I'm gonna read through a few of these super chats, bro. Just because yo, y'all are y'all are sending in crazy money. Thank you, all of you guys. Um Yusuf N here says people need to realize the issues of the shambolic United predates Ten Hag. Ralph came in and observed in like two seconds this club requires surgery. And he wait, also wait, goes just, on to say just on that, just on that, yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Remember everybody that was clowning Ralph for saying that we needed 10 because Man United were having a good little we're having a good season. Ralph Ragnick said we need 10, you know. I really wonder what everybody's saying there. Let's have the humility to admit when you 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 overdid it or you got gas. Let's come on, let's 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 be honest here. Because there's going to be some players we're going to talk about, and I'm going to be honest about some of these players. So I hope people realize when they got too carried away. The Man United mm. fans are arrogant, bro. We're too arrogant, and that's the reality of it. We're too arrogant. We've not done anything yet. We've won the Carabao Cup, which is good. We've had a. We, we might. We're probably going to finish in the top four, which is good. But we haven't done anything yet. So arrogant, bro. All season, when I was saying we're not in the title race, we did it up. People are saying no. It's because you think you're gonna. No, we're not good enough. We're not good enough. We're not good enough as a team. And going back to what he said, yes, it predates Ten Hag. But this is why I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. If in the summer he hasn't addressed it, how am I meant to how am I meant to defend that? How am I meant to defend it? If in the summer he hasn't addressed the issues which have predated him, then 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 we'll see in it. Yeah, well, then no, we'll I'm see. With I'm with you. He's just he's just another talking head. If if he doesn't do anything differently, bro. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And insanity in football is having the same players over and over and expecting different results. Yusuf N also goes, let's ask the question, if Ten Hag and the Sevilla coach were to swap positions, who would go through? The answer answers what the issue at United is. I'm not sure if he's saying that's Ten Hag or if it was the players. Hmm. But thank you for the super chat, Yusuf. Um, Ali the Great says, I better hear some criticism for the most informed player in the world. Bro played 45 and had zero impact. Rice, please. Also, Sancho make an impact challenge. Impossible. De Gea, that's it. De Gea. So There's a lot I'll of comments. Be, I'll, be honest. I'll be honest. If Listen. If in this game, you watched Manchester United play that match and you have walked away from that match talking about Marcus Rashford, who has just come, we rushed him back to play 45 minutes when we were already losing and then conceded two minutes into the second half. If you walk away from that talking about Marcus Rashford, you have a mental illness, bro. You, you There's something, there's some, no, no, no. You, there's something seriously wrong with you, bro. You need yeah. to seriously look at yourself. That's all I got to say. Um, Ash goes, how many embarrassing collapses under Eric Ten Hag in just seven months? I'd like your thoughts on Casemiro's passing ability to finally Sancho's coach. I'm going to leave Sancho to the end because we have like six comments on him. We'll talk about Casemiro. Casemiro, Casemiro. One thing about Casemiro. Casemiro is, first, his form lately has been a disgrace, oh. right? Since since the whole suspension stuff, I don't know if it's just taken, taken his season out. He's been poor lately, right? But listen, firstly... What Casemiro is, is a Hollywood passer. And, I've, and I've, I've said this to you, I think, behind the scenes. Yeah, Casemiro can pull off a worldy pass from nowhere. First time across the pitch, left foot across the pitch, whatever. But his basic short five-yard, six, seven-yard passing is poor. It's poor. The guy can ping it left, right. He can, But his general, I don't know if it's down to his concentration or what it is, but he gives so many under-hit passes, so many over-hit passes. He can do the whole spraying thing and everyone will stand up and clap and clap and clap and clap, but his actual short passing, which allows him to like get involved in control games or whatever, it's it's low level, bro. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. He's passing the ball sloppy. I guarantee if we check his people, somebody bring his passing um, statistics today. It's probably, set, uh, I'll say, 67%. I'll say, mm, yeah, 67% pass completion. I haven't even seen it. Let me tell uh, you. I can say that. I'll find out right now. Look, everyone knows my thoughts on Casemiro. I think he's I think he's a top player. I'm not going to say he's a top player. He's a top player. But uh, listen, we're here to be serious, bro. We're here to be yeah. serious. I think he's a top player. But when it comes to basic 
passing. And when I didn't put him in our top 10, when I said um, we won't, we only have one player getting to City's top 10 technically, people in my TikTok, TikTok thing were talking about Casemiro, Casemiro, Casemiro. I was like, bro, he's not, he would not get into City's top 10 technically. He's not on that level. He's not on that level. Yeah, you know I mean, passing, short passing is poor. I have, I've had this issue with many players. I had that issue with, um, with Pogba. I had that issue with Bruno. I just think I don't know what it is. These guys can pull off worldies, but when it comes to just a basic short pass, it's sloppy, bro. I don't get it. Poor. But th- this is the difference between him and Rodri, for example. And we, me and you have gone back and forth about that. Look, I think both of them are top players. But this is why, for me, I'll always take Rodri over Casemiro. Because Casemiro, although he has qualities that I believe probably exceed Rodri's, at the end of the day, I still think Casemiro, to truly get the best out of him, you need two guys who are high volume, excellent short passers, excellent technical ability next to him at all times, bro. Playing him next to the likes of Sabitzer, playing him next to the likes of Fred, simply just basically accelerates his flaws even more. He, it ex- Forget about just short passing, bro. This guy has that, that tendency that a lot of our midfielders have and that when the ball comes to them, Man United's midfielders treat the ball like a bomb. They have no composure on the ball to, to take the ball out of the air, kill it, and play the game. Too many None. times United midfielders literally just kick the ball right back where it came from, the same direction where literally from a kid, you're taught open up your hips, play the other side. How many of United's players actually switch the ball? Very few of them, let alone our midfielders. So mm-hmm. Ca- Casemiro, right? I, I'm not going to say United should sell him. He's not good enough. He, he's a good player. But this games like today, when he's playing next to Sabitzer, when he's not playing next to Fred, they just exemplify his flaws, in my opinion. So I kind of stand by what I've said all season. I think Rodri is a better DM than him. And that might be a little reactionary here, but I've said it all season. That That's just my kind of point of view on that. Uh few more super chats here. By the way, he had 76% pass accuracy, Kim. 76. 76. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, not surprised. They're still poor. Yeah. What, what's our average? Under 80%, right? The midfield don't complete 80% of their passes. None of our midfielders complete 80% of their passes this season. So that just shows to everybody. That just shows everybody what, what our midfield level is saying. You know what I mean? But look, there's so much stuff that's just like, and there's so much stuff, but bro, Saeed, bro, I'm sorry, don't write the hater, please, because you, <laughs> Saeed, please, not today, bro, Saeed, not today, bro, because you are a champion for the hater. I need to see you come out and 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 denounce that. I need to see you come out and denounce that. Today is about honesty. Today is about honesty and humility. That is what I want to see today from everyone: honesty and humility. You know what I mean? So I don't want to see none of that. I don't want to see none of that. Anyway, listen, what did, what did he say? Sancho and Martial needs to learn Chinese. Oh, both of them. Low intensity. Like, look, there's there's a there's a there's a little army of people on Twitter that will speak about, you know what? We're actually better without Rashford. You know, we control games better without Rashford, you know? You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah, this is this this look, look at this Sancho and Martial. Look at them. Martial, eight seasons at the club, limping off. Limping off, all right, as soon as the going gets tough. Oh, I've got a leg injury. Let me get off the pitch. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not buying it with this brother, bro. I'm not buying it. Somebody said, oh, unfortunate knock, whatever, whatever. Eight years at the club. And by the way, he's a severe flop. He's a severe flop. Let's not forget that. <laughs> he was going back to his former club. <laughs> That's his former club, bro. He's a severe flop. He's been at the club eight years, got loaned out, flopped and came back and, and limped off at against Sevilla. This is why with Marcia, right? Uh, look, I, I keep saying it this year. I believe when everyone is mm-hmm. fit, mm-hmm. I, I always say when United, everyone is fit. I believe Martial leads the line for them. But guys, this is why people are starting to say, "Oh, next season, like he can he can still contribute for us." Martial needs to leave this summer, guys. No matter how talented a footballer he is, no matter how maybe this iteration of United needs him because they have no one else up front. It's also, by the way, I hate the argument. I kept seeing it all season that how can a player be bad if the team plays worse without him? Guys, if the replacement for a player is barely a footballer in Val Veghorst, it doesn't matter to me how bad the team is without that player, right? You're comparing poor to, to absolute dog shit. So I don't want to hear that kind of excuse, to be honest with you. Martial needs to leave in the summer, bro. His injury record is absolutely shocking. His intensity level, like Cam said, is absolutely shocking. The less said about him, the better, to be honest with you. Oh, Every single time, time the going gets tough for United, he's, he's one of the he's main people that, that that completely collapses. You can't he's trust him. He's, he's, he's not in the trenches, bro. He's not in the trenches. I've been saying this for years. 
I've been saying this for years, years. You can't go in the trenches with Martial, bro. You can't. Yes, Man United were missing players. We understand that. Some people are going to try and downplay it just down to missing players. With them players, without them players, we do the same thing away from home and get battered. So I don't even want to hear it. Do you know what I mean? With them players or without, we get battered. Because if Man United played well today, you guys would have all opened your mouth and said, ooh, the, the link-up between Sancho and Martial is like, it's liquid. You guys would have found all of your excuses. So don't now, you may not go out, you're going to start talking about, oh, but we didn't have Bruno, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. And it's funny because Bruno is very polarising amongst this fan base, right? And he's very polarising. So there's some people that don't even rate him and they're going to act like, oh, yeah, we... Listen, nah, it, it, it is what it is, man. Sancho, mate, listen... He's on, he's, it's at the crossroads for him. It's at the crossroads for him. We know it as well. We know this already. It's at the crossroads for him. You want to try and find ways that could potentially work out for him. But when he's ducking tackles, no threat, doesn't have shots, you're, 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 you're struggling. You're going to struggle. Do you know what I mean? You're going to struggle. So at this point, listen, I don't think Man United are going to sell him this summer, but it's going to come down to one of them loans. And then he's just going to end up riding his deal down. Kind of like how Eric Bailly has been and all these other guys. You know, Man United never sell. We never make good sales. We're not going to get no money out of Sancho. We're going to just find a way to for his contract to wind down somehow. And then eventually he'll be out the back door and he'll probably be at West Ham in three years or something like that. That's just the way it is, man. And let's, let's be honest. Or if you want to package him and put him as part of a deal to go and get someone else... Um, Kavara, Liao, I don't even know who, and you want to put him as part of a deal, go and do that. But United ain't going to do that. We're going to loan him out and try and find a way. And I won't even... Pfft. Listen, the pattern of Man United is just to hoard mid. Mm. That's the way it is. And look, Sancho, good player, decent player, decent player. Right, but at this, point, thing, at this point, at this point, it's like, look, technical... We don't even get to see your technical ability enough. I like him in the final third. He makes composed decisions, but doesn't get in the final third enough. He doesn't cause enough threat. When Anthony's your most threatening player, week in, week out, when Rashford's not there, you're in serious, serious, serious trouble. You're in serious trouble. So Sancho has not has nothing about him, right? <laughs> like him or hate him. I see a lot of people saying, oh, I like him, but or I don't like him, but forget about all of that. The, the, what I said over the over the weekend, right, about Anthony, everyone knows my 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 grievances about Anthony. I'm not a huge fan of him, but I have to admit, Anthony has charisma. Anthony has personality, and I keep saying about him and Garnacho. You might not think that either of them are as, as talented as Sancho, whatever the hell that means. But what they have undoubtedly over him, and why it will take them at least to a certain point in this game that it won't even take Sancho, especially at this club, is they have balls, bro. They have personality. Sancho, I can show very little sympathy for him, right? Because he gives the manager zero selection headache. When everyone is fit at Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag is not thinking in the back of my head, his head, how do I get Sancho involved? Because he's shown him absolutely nothing to suggest that he has to be involved from the get-go every single game. Whatever you guys think about Rashford, I agree with you, Cam. I see people saying United are a better team about Rashford. Absolutely the hell not. Rashford will start every single game he's fit as long as the, the current attackers are, are here at United. Until United goes and buys a Vinicius or an Mbappe, Rashford will be playing every single game. He's their biggest goal for him. Uh, Anthony, and the thing. I'm, I'm not done. Anthony will start every single game for United. Again, whether you think so or not, Tanak trusts the guy. He's given enough of a reason for Tanak to play him over and over and over. And Martial is his striker. He's not going to play Sancho down the middle. Sancho was in serious danger this summer. I said it last show and people were saying, oh, we, don't, we can't speak about uh, Palistri or Amad or, or Garnacho." Sancho is in serious danger next season of not even being the second choice attacker in every single one of the front three positions at United. There's a serious danger that next year there's two left wingers better than him or ahead of him in the pecking order, two right wingers ahead of him in the pecking order, and centrally, we know he doesn't play there. I keep saying it. I know, I agree with you. United, United will not sell him this summer. I, I, I misspoke last time when I said, oh, uh, United doesn't give you second chance or whatever. They will hoard talent and they will basically drain his, 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 uh, his value on the market. But if I were at United, I would get rid of him this summer, bro. I don't see a future at Manchester United where Jaden Sancho succeeds. There we go. And look, people, please stop trying to say, oh, Cam's has had a Martial agenda. He's had a De Gea agenda. He's had a Sancho agenda. If Why is it an agenda when I'm clearly right? When, when we're clearly right here? What are you talking about? You guys say agenda. How can you have an agenda against every single player? Like, What, what the hell is that? At some point, do you not just put it down to objectivity? Can't just say agenda for everything. 
agenda is when you're being absolutely unreasonable and you're just moving absolutely crazy about anything, whether they score, you're hating, blah, blah. Listen, guys, stop that, man. Stop that. You can't keep saying it's an agenda, agenda. At some point, you just got to accept that I was right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know I mean, just last week, you guys were on me. Just last week. And now, look at you. Your heads are all in your hands. So it is what it is. English Town FC, Pogba, please be fit. LOL United, please beat Sevilla. Oh, Pogba, Pogba got through. Got through. Wait, listen. Hey, Allegri. <laughs> Did Juve win? Yeah, good Juve are through, bro. I'm sure they're through, yeah. I think Roma are doing yeah, a madness right now, Roma. by the way. They got I think Roma are doing a madness. Yeah, Roma are through as well, bro. <laughs> Serious yeah. gaffers, mate. Allegri, Jose, hmm, they'll tell you that you need... They'll tell you you need to do the you need to do triangles, diagrams, and that to make it in this in this era. Are you shameless? I was <laughs> so real men are rising. <laughs> real men are rising, boy. Ten hard. We got this summer to prove if you're a real men or not, boy. Let me tell you that. Fraud two with the super chat. If Sancho was even half or a third as good as he was at Dortmund, he would be one of your best attackers. But I don't recognize this guy. I see on the pitch, this fall off must be studied. Win stream though. Thank you, Fraud two, for the super chat. Uh, Shelbo, much love from America. Man, you gives me the same feelings as the Knicks. End of the season can't come quick enough, but need to see change after all of this. Boy, the Knicks are getting a little more in the postseason than us. We're Lakers huh? before LeBron. We're Lakers before LeBron came back, man. We're Lakers before LeBron. I'm telling you. He's saying D-Lo and Julius Randle and B.I. <laughs> Bro. D-Lo oh, J- Jaden Sancho. Loading. And- when is it coming? Bro. I'm still waiting, bro. He said scary hours when Ronaldo joined. It's not been scary, bro. It's scary it's hours is a deloading tweet. <laughs> exactly, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, yo. You can't raise this Crazy. shit, man. Christine Stevenson with the Super Chat. All the hype on Twitter this week that we're having a better season than Arsenal. I would swap to be where they are in a heartbeat. We will not challenge the hay and goal no matter who we sign. Ten Hag poor. I'm with you, bro. Yeah, Look, I didn't that real stuff for me was nonsense. I didn't engage in that in that conversation. I don't have any opinion mm-hmm. on that conversation. It's a fabricated conversation. Anybody will make can make either side sound better. Arsenal fans can sure. say, you know, we're we're closer to where we want to be, which is a fact. You know, wherever wherever Man United win a trophy and finish third or fourth, we're not better than Arsenal. Arsenal are where they want to be, uh, closer to where they want to be than Man United. Then Man United can turn around and say, "Well, we got a trophy, so we're the better. We had the better season." It's a silly debate that only Man United fans are going to agree with the left, and only Arsenal fans are going to agree with the right. It's, it's. I'm not involved in that, man. I am. I think that's an absolutely nonsense point, bro. I don't think there's a single United fan, hand on heart, that could say Carabao in third is better than the season Arsenal are having, bro. I would swap our season for theirs in a heartbeat. Uh, while lead Afzal says unpopular opinion, Ericsson and Casemiro, too rash in my opinion, can't be starters week in, week out next season, in my opinion. I think Casemiro well, can. I think Ericsson yeah. is debatable. We'll definitely need to upgrade on Ericsson's position there. He needs to be like coming off the bench, making an impact. And I still think he should be playing a bit further forward. He's not a controller. He's these are 10 who got pushed to play number eight, signed in a three to do a job. I'm not going to sit here and criticize Ericsson too much. I think he's done well for the value. I think he's done well for what he, he can do. But Ericsson, yeah, I agree, should not be a Manchester United starting centre midfielder week in, week out next season. I think Casemiro can, personally. Yeah, look, again, I, I repeat my point. I think Casemiro can absolutely start for Man United. Are we kidding? We, beggars can't be choosers here anyways, but he is a top player still, and I just think that we need to surround him with more quality on the ball. Ericsson, people, people, again, this is... The biggest problem with United fans, I think football fans in general, but I'm going to single, single out United fans. Players become better in the eyes of football fans when they don't play. So the last few weeks when Ericsson hasn't been in the team and United have been struggling to keep the ball, everyone has been in my mentions saying, oh, you slandered Ericsson or you said he wasn't good enough. Look at us without him. But even when he's in the team, although Ericsson is probably the most talented passer or talented player on the ball in United's midfield that they can call upon, guys, I'll say it. I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. The brother is a hologram defensively. Defensively, he offers little to no resilience whatsoever. He can't run. He can't physically compete. And in the modern game, against the likes of, in the Premier League especially, but against Sevilla, when you're playing against Fernando, when you're playing against that Gudelj guy, Orlando. when you're playing against Suso, who we made look like Neymar today, Ericsson cannot compete physically with these guys, bro. Unless you have a team of 10 warriors 
10 players from Atletico Madrid, then maybe you can squeeze an Ericsson here or there. But in games where United already are being outworked the hell off the pitch, he's a liability. I'm so sorry Ericsson is a liability defensively. Bro, hold on. Hold on. Man United got schooled by a 35-year-old Man City flop. Yeah? Sorry. Is, is this the Man City? Yeah, it is the Man City flop. Oh, my goodness. We got schooled by a 35-year-old Man City flop and Rakitic, who is 35. We got schooled by two 35-year-olds, bro, in the midfield. How old is the brother that played next to Rakitic? Oh, my goodness, bro. Next we had Rakitic Fernandes, looking bro. like uh, MSN Rakitic, by the way, bro. Bro, we made him look like, literally look like Modric. Let's see. Sevilla's midfield is 31 years old. 35, 35. We got schooled. Hey, hey, Jesus, Nav Jesus Navas, another another Man City average player. Scored last World War. He almost scored last week and had a comfortable game. Like this is embarrassing, bro. This is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. No, Rakitic is cold. Don't get twisted, people. But thirty-five, and you're getting schooled like that. Goodness me, bro. Goodness that's a mid -team, me, bro. bro. That's what I'm telling you. It's football Goodness heritage me. aside, right? And people say, oh, Sevilla. And the... Look, I agree. They're, they've shown this is ridiculous. That's so... no, that's no, embarrassing. The thing is, though, is, what did I say last week in our on our talk? I said, I'm sorry, Sabitza. You're a good guy. I actually like you. But if Man United have him as one of our signings this season, that's poor. That's a disgrace. We're not going anywhere. I, I literally said this last week. And look, 12 passes. Bro, the guys, is he a midfielder or is he a striker? I'm confused. He's a forward. That, he's a forward. My dad told me before. I didn't believe it. I'm looking. He plays better up front, basically. That comes down to Ten Hag, though. That comes down to Ten Hag. Ten Hag's been utilizing him as if he's like oh some Absolutely. shadow striker. Absolutely. He's a shadow striker. Absolutely. Ten Hag's not prioritizing controlling midfields he's not doing that he's not doing that you brought Sabitza and he's there running off the last man he's running off the last man he's playing in more advanced positions than Martial can I say this as well Kim Veghorst and Sabitzer make no mistake about it Ten Hag is trying to salvage those loan deals because he brought Veghorst in not to play as a 10 like he ended up trying to play him as he brought him as a striker and he was so poor up front that in an attempt to save face, moved him deeper, moved Rashford up front, and moved Bruno out of his best position on the left to, to get the best out of Veghorst, to like basically salvage that loan. The same thing is happening with Sabitzer. The first five games or so, Sabitzer was playing deeper in midfield because that's where Ten Hag brought him in to do. He realized very quickly that he cannot complete that role at Man United. And now he's trying to play him further forward, again, to salvage the loan deal. These two loan I deals promise, have been absolute... Yeah. They've been absolute disasters. And I don't care about whether you think they're ready or not. There is no doubt in my mind that the likes of Zidane Iqbal, that the likes of players in the academy, Menu, cannot come into this team and do the exact same thing that Sabitzer and Veghorst have done. That is a problem on Eric Ten Hag, who we were all told that at Ajax prioritizes youth. We haven't prioritized youth this season whatsoever. Bar Garnacho. Look, top clubs, unless it's like contract disputes, where it's like... um. For example, like Casemiro, for example, he had a little situation with he wanted a new deal. They weren't going to give a new deal or whatever the situation is. Sometimes it's contract disputes. But if a top club just has a player sitting on a bench and sells them, that player is most likely not that good. And you know what I mean? And if United fans, we're going to ex don't accept the bare minimum by saying, let's sign Sabitza. Let's sign, bro, listen, you can keep McTominay to do the same thing if that's the case. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's, there's no point. There's no point. And yeah, exactly. I said the same thing. You're dragging, you're dragging Zidane Iqbal all over the country, all over the world during Ramadan. It's Eid tomorrow. And he's there getting zero minutes. He's not even played a minute of professional football, club football in his career. Getting dragged left, right and centre all over the place. Bro, he can be at home. He can be at home celebrating with his Muslim brothers. But no, he's out here getting holding licks to, to Sevilla. Just sitting there looking. Come on, man. It's mental, bro. It's mental. A few more super chats here. Check our away record from last year. This is nothing new. I think we lost our last six away games under Ralph. It's continued into the season. Mental. Check our away record. Nothing new. To, uh, bro, exactly. Uh, same players. This is what I'm saying. At this summer, you need to make big calls, Ten Hag, bro. You need to make big calls. Big calls. Uh, somebody said that's a lie. He played in the CL last season. I don't know about that, you know. I don't I think know. Maybe he played the last game against um, Young Boys or whoever it was last year, Villarreal. I don't know, but let's see. 
I don't remember Zayla and Iqbal playing a professional match for Man United. Defo played zero in the league. No, oh, yeah, he made oh one appearance in Europe. Yeah, he made one appearance. So one appearance in his whole Manchester United career. Zero in the league. Great. He proved you wrong. Oh, yeah, damn, man. I mean... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sean Adams of the Super Chat says Sevilla is like Real in the Champions League. To be honest, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> it's Europa crazy. Heritage. They're the one team I didn't want to get in this competition, bro. Europa Heritage, bro. Look at what yeah. Ten Hag is out here saying, and man, them want me to be like defending. I can't defend this, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, now listen, you can be that guy in the presser who doesn't like to speak about your players' futures and stuff because you want them engaged with you for the rest of the season. That's fine. But you have to, I'm sorry, you have, you can't, you've got to speak about, you can't just be defending all the time, bro. You've got to somehow show the fans that you are a serious guy, bro. You're a serious guy. This isn't serious, bro. This isn't serious. How is this serious, bro? Is this serious to you, bro, Liaz? No, no. Come on, you know, he, say, come on, he knows he's got to do better. It's not a good enough performance. Did he say anything else, people? Did he say anything else? Bro, I... <laughs> It's actually baffling to me, bro. I, I'm really puzzled what Ten Hag's infatuation of De Gea is. I don't know if it's the club. I don't think it has, to be it has to be an infatuation, bro, because this goalkeeper, to quote ESPN FC a few years ago, is literally picking up the ball and throwing it into his own net. This is how much of a liability the guy is for our team, bro. He's picking up the ball and he's throwing it in his own net, bro. De Gea is a liability. And... I know we heard rumors in the past few seasons that especially when Dean Henderson was starting games for United and there was rumors that he was going to take over the line, uh, the goalkeeping position, De Gea was apparently frustrated and, and made it like uh, uh, very well known that he was unhappy to be his backup and that maybe there was pressure on Ali to reinstate De Gea. And De Gea is obviously a huge figure at the club. He's the most senior player there. But bro, Eric Ten Hag at Ajax was known for having Andre Onana, who's probably the most ambitious goalkeeper with his feet in all of Europe. Some people said that he's too ambitious with his feet. Ten Hag instated him as his goalkeeper. How can you go from Andre Onana, who's effectively a midfielder on the pitch, to De Gea, who has the worst feet in Europe? The worst feet in Europe. It's infatuation. And he wants to give him a new contract. Bro, I I'm with you. How, how can we possibly fully back Eric Ten Hag if he's going to continue with the same players that have failed him over and over That's and over. That's not a, I'm backing him. I'm backing Ten Hag 100% right now, right? At the end of the summer, I'll reevaluate my, my thoughts. That's what I'm saying because you have an opportunity. This is the second season. In the second season, the team has to start taking the image of the manager. It has to start being now molded. Cool. You've had your opportunity to see what you want to do with the first guys. Next season, make moves. That's all I'm saying. Right now, I'm all in. Ten Hag is doing a good job overall, in a way. He's doing a good job. But in the summer, if these same players are still there, De Gea is still starting, we're still doing this nonsense, then, then it's questionable, right? It's questionable because at, at the end of the day, I feel like you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're harming yourself. We're harming ourselves. So let's see. He's tying his hands behind his back, Cam. He's literally trying to do a job and, and holding himself back, bro. And look, Harry Maguire, right? As I said, we were talking about, there's no point. I don't like talking about people that I don't believe are going to be at the club next season. But, mate, it's just... What did I tell you at the weekend, Cam? What did I tell you at the I've weekend about Maguire? I've never like this guy. Hmm? What did I tell you at the weekend about Maguire? I said the best thing that could happen to Maguire with him and the fans and all and United, he's going to play to basically just I know Lissandro is out for the season. Varane, it looks like he could be out for the season too. You're all we have, bro. Just don't mess up. Just help United crawl again across the finish line. Be as faultless as you can really be. Maybe even get us to another trophy, even if you don't. Leave the club on good terms. We know. Thank you for your service. We won't forget you. We won't remember you too poorly. He is effectively, if his name wasn't already run through the mud, dragging his football kit and like dragging it quite physically over the mud, bro. Just don't mess up. Just don't be a negative. And he can't even do that. He can't even yeah. do that, bro. I love it's what you always say about Maguire, bro. It's like a cancer. It's it's like it's like a fire. Mm -hmm. Fire doesn't just like infect one part of the forest. It spreads. Yeah. It burns the entire forest down. 
bro, I just don't... The guy just literally just makes the team nervous, bro. The guy just... Again, when it's the atmosphere is hot, when the when the game is real high pressure, you you can't rely on Harry Maguire at Man United. You just can't. He radiates. Thank you, Tricks. He radiates negativity through the team. You know what I mean? He he radiates it, and it's a shame, bro. I remember first season, I was like, okay, cool. You know, Maguire. I'm gonna. Then there was a point where I was like, nah. Do you know what? There's no help in this guy from the second season. There's no help in this guy, and. He was always somebody that got away with mistakes. I said, I made an example. I'm going to say it again for people that are, might be new here. I said, when you look at Gary Cahill and you look at Maguire, I actually thought Gary Cahill was a really good defender. But anytime Gary Cahill made a mistake, he got punished. <laughs> it's like one mistake, go all the time. Harry Maguire, for me, was a bad defender who every time he made a mistake, the team don't get punished. This was what was happening. The only thing that's changed now is every time Maguire now makes a mistake, punished, 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 punished. Mm. But he's been doing the same thing for years, but somehow getting away with it. There's even a video. There's even a video of like um, that somebody circling about how many times Lissandra has saved, has saved him. Like, people, don't mistake what I just said. I said Gary Cahill was a very good defender. In fact, I think he's so underrated. I really like him. I said he was unlucky to the point that when he made a mistake, he got punished. But other defenders like Maguire get away with a lot of mistakes. And now he just doesn't get away with it. And his true level is showing. He, got, he gets lucky, bro. He gets lucky. I know it's, not, it's not showing, man. <laughs> I don't know who we even offload him to, bro. Every single time we play the guy, you know, like you want to play a guy like that to maybe like increase his value. We hoped when he went to the World Cup, he'd increase his value. Every time this guy steps onto the pitch, guys, we lose five million pounds on him. It'll be a oh, miracle. He's got a, if he's got a very, he's got a very powerful. He's got a very well known. He's got, Maguire's got a very well known agent, bruv. That's all I'll say. So his agent, but should be plugged in. He's very plugged in in the UK. Please get to work. Okay, let's go through a few more of these. Lewis Wallace says, we are a team in transition. You can't expect the team to play like Ten Hag wants us to in one season, not excusing the players tonight, but be realistic. I agree. Look, we both agree with that. But our whole thing is, bro, if you continue playing the same players and you're expecting the style of play to change, you're expecting us to get better on the ball, why? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting something to change. Playing the same players over and over, playing De Gea and goal season after season after season, how are you expecting your build-up to get any better? My issue, my issue with this is that I don't think we've seen... Yes, the players are really bad, right? It doesn't help when the first pass reference of De Gea to Maguire completely gets messed around, right? That doesn't help, even if you are trying to play a, a, an effective style. I mean, a, a expansive style. But my issue is we haven't seen enough of something where we can say this is a Ten Hag blueprint on this team. Enough for that next season, right? So that for next season, we can say, um, oh, we know how we're going to play under Ten Hag when he gets his own players. Can anybody really say that? We can't really say that. Do you know what I mean? What he's instilled into Man United is good resiliency in certain games, know how to win our matches. I think for the majority, we've been more solid than we have. With the, we've just been, we've had some really bad results, but majority have been solid. He's done really well to work with the squad that we have. Really, mm. really well. I, I That's why I like him as a manager. But what I'm saying is, what is it that you guys envision next season for Man United to play like? Because I don't think this season we've seen enough through many games to say, oh, when he gets his controllers, we're going to play this style. Yeah. Can we really say that? I don't know. And look, things can change. Don't get it twisted. When Arteta came into Arsenal, they were playing five at the back. Who would have thought they'll start playing this champagne football now? So yes, True. things can change people. I, I completely understand that. He has stabilised the team, which is great. But all I'm saying is, people are saying next season is going to be a completely different football. What football? I don't know what football he's intending on playing. I don't, I don't know yet. We just got to be honest. We will see what happens. And when, when it happens, I'll be like, yes, this is this is how we're playing. This is a Man United team. But right now, there's not really an identity 
to no. for me to say next season we're going to play this way. That's what I'm but, saying. But th that's the thing. I think we, we were both happy because I actually said one thing I admire about Ten Hag is that I think we were all told, oh, he's this guy who sticks to his principles and he's stubborn. And we've seen uh, the old Dutch manager that we had. He basically stuck with his style of play no matter – how flawed it was, or how he didn't have the players to do it, but he stuck with it. I think it was actually his death in terms of Van Hal. But with Ten Hag, one thing that I think me and Cam have both been very positive about is the fact that this guy, for his first season, actually has probably sacrificed style for for results, for short term results. And I think he had to do it. Like Cam said, Arteta also did that throughout his first eighteen months, let's say. But one thing about Arteta, and this is where I'm starting to have a problem with Ten Hag, is that Arteta, you could see, was shifting out the players season after season after season, slowly, but still shifting them out that didn't fit what his overall philosophy wanted to be. So yeah, he started the season, he started uh, his Arsenal tenure with Leno, he started it out with Socrates, he started it out with uh, Nicolas Pepe, Obama Yang, but every single summer he brought in players that eventually will lead to the way he wants to play. Ramsdale. Thomas Partey, Ben this White, is why Martin Odegaard. Is important. This yes. is why the second season, this, this summer is important. And Absolutely. this is why my opinion on him shapes through this summer. Right. You but that's I mean? my whole my thing. Opinion, Ten Hag, yeah. The fact that he's already going to extend David De Gea it's is worrying. already ringing alarm bells in my head, bro. It's worrying. It's worrying. And look, even with Pep Guardiola at the first season of Man City, Pep basically accepted... I might get a couple slap-ins here or whatever, but no matter what, I'm going to try and get them to play this certain football. So as soon as the next season came, you knew once Pep gets his players, they're going to play champagne football. You saw it because in the 16-17 season, they were still playing this wild ball, but it just wasn't, they just didn't have good enough players. My issue is that, again, De Gea is going to be getting new deals. This person's getting a new deal you're praising how much you love Martial's and stuff. It makes me think, are you just going to do the same, have the same mistakes that the other managers did? Man United is the only football club in that will keep players 12 years, eight years, nine years that have not won a lick. that haven't done anything. Do you know what I mean? We're the only club that would do this. And you would have thought if a new manager comes in, he's going to be like, look, I'm going to rip it all apart. This is what we're going to do. And we haven't done that. So that's the worry. But listen, we said this is going to be a European show. We had to meet. We've done almost an hour on Manchester United, bro. Do you know what I mean? I just so. want to read the last few super chats just because people are sending in money. So I don't want to deny them. Uh, yeah, Navid Ahmad says, is Brighton going to kill us? I'm worried. I'm worried. Of course you're worried. I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried. scared chillers with them, bro. I'm Talk worried. about technical security. Sevilla are, are not a good team, guys. Brighton will pop the ball around us. Honestly, that's concerning. What was Luke Shaw was trying to do his little limping act? Martial was doing his little limping act. Rashford's just back from injury. Bruno better be Hulk if we're going to try and win, boy, because there's still guys that are going to be out. It's, it's, it's Honestly, it's, it's going to be worrying. And look, this is what I'm saying, bro. If Man United don't go and win, please, I don't want to hear nobody talking about Man City. Oh, my God, they're going to win the treble. You don't get through Brighton. That's your issue, bro. You you did nothing to stop them. Mm -hmm. Nothing. We're, we're, we got the opportunity to, to... We have the opportunity to stop City from doing this treble. We directly can affect that. If we don't, if if we don't get in the, involved, then who cares? Do you think I care about these silly debates? I don't care. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't care. Alfred Iben Fobi says Cam said if he speaks, he'll be suspended for six months. Bruh, I can't <laughs> speak on De Gea to publicly too much, man. I'll leave that for the group chats, bro. Bills Ten says Jaden Malik Sancho. I'm tired. Can you do something for me? Hooked at half time know. will be ghost. Uh, listen. Was yeah. anyone surprised, by the way, that Sancho was going to get substituted? The minute I saw Rashford uh, warming up, I knew it was him. That's what I'm saying. He gives the manager no selection headaches whatsoever. It makes it very easy for him. Priest of banter. Ten Hag keeps some of these players cooked by Christmas. I, look, I, I think United will probably give him a little more time than that. They usually keep managers two seasons minimum. Well, I've but... seen this club. These, these, these players can throw play managers under the bus. They can really do that. So I won't put enough in past nobody at this club. Aran, what do you guys think for United's next run of games? Are you guys confident and 100% sure the top four is secured? Me personally, and this might come back to bite me in the ass, I've said it throughout the season, I think United will finish in the top four. But it's not really to say that they're a brilliant team. Again, I think United are a very average team. But the quality of the Premier League this season has been massively overrated, in my opinion. You see it in Europe, the fact that there's only one team in the semifinals. I don't think there's any teams left uh, in, in England in the Europa League. And West Ham, I think, might have progressed tonight. But 
it's mm-hmm. a weak league this season. Bar the, bar the top two, the rest of the league is very weak. So I think they'll finish in the top four, but it's more against the likes of Spurs, Brighton, Liverpool, Chelsea than it is to say United are a top team. I don't know. I'm concerned. I don't think top four is secure. I don't think top four is secure yet. I don't I don't think it's secure yet. We'll see what happens in there. We'll see what happens, but I don't think it's fully secure. We still got to play Tottenham as well, away from home. And we know what we're like away from home. Won't be surprised to see Harry Kane get, get a score a hat trick against us the way we're playing. Do you know what I mean? So let's see. I haven't actually checked out the remaining fixtures that we have, but nah, I don't think top four is secure. No, nah, I don't think so. This result could send our whole season the wrong way. Let's not let's not get that mistaken. Do you know what I mean? This week can send our whole season the wrong way. Sevilla out, Brighton, we don't know what they can do. We're on main, we're main event, bro. We're on main, we're on, everyone's watching us um mm-hmm. against Brighton. Listen, we can get we're on the summer jam screen, bro. We're on the summer jam screen, we can get embarrassed. You can potentially get embarrassed. It might send the whole season. So I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not hundred percent confident. Human being with the super chat says De Gea and Maguire are walking disasters. Maguire fell on Martial's ankle, which got Tony injured. We already know the issues in this team. We must sell around eight players. I think we both fully agree with that. Uh MF FVT says United need a Gundogan more than a carrying central midfielder. They need a lot of stuff, bro. I think to say they need this and not that is, 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 I don't know about all that. Uh, Jay Ashley Martin says, my blood is boiling. Joe club offering him a new deal. Ditto. Big up Jay, man. He'd be supporting the team like crazy. Big up, bro. Tim AFC said two super chats. So he said, Saeed, the cheek of it. Tell him cams. Big you two up, best content creators on YouTube at the moment. It's nice to see you both rising. Keep it up. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate Thanks, that, bro. Man. He also says, tweeted you earlier as well, Lias. Do you think it was naive from Eric Ten Hag today? No cover for your defense, which was already damaged with no Varane and Martinez. I think that's a little tough, to be honest with you, because I think we're dealt the cards that, that we have at this point. Like, How many managers can really plan for having their two starting center backs injured for potentially the rest of the season? Mm-hmm. I I, I don't well, you think really maybe like a Fred should have come in instead of playing uh, Ericsson, who you just said is a hologram, and Sabitza basically playing false nine or whatever role he wants to be playing. Do you think without, especially with Lindelof and Maguire there, maybe a Fred in a double pivot with, with Casemiro in a way could have shielded us a little bit more? Maybe have Fred and put Ericsson where Bruno would play, you know, Ericsson, Fred. And Bruno, I mean, sorry, every and Fred and Casemiro, maybe you could have done something like that. I actually hear what he's saying there because well, we're away from home and we got Sabitza basically playing nine. We got Cas and we got Ericsson doing whatever. We've got Casemiro being that first reference and just passing the ball to anybody. So I kind of get what he's saying. I mean, look, I hear it. I, I don't think those are bad suggestions, but like I said last show, it almost seems like Fred has been basically exiled from the team. Like, I don't know where it came from. I don't know what has stemmed it because I don't think he's been any worse than any of our other players. But it appears that Ten Hag is completely out of favor or that Fred has completely fell out of favor with Ten Hag. So oh, we still got to play it. Aston Villa, yeah? That's tough. We still got to play Aston Villa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah this, right, we got, we got Tottenham. Oh, we got Tottenham. We got Tottenham and Villa after Brighton and then Brighton again. <laughs> Away from home. <laughs> Yo. Yo, top four is not secure. Top four is not secure. What? We got Brighton, Tottenham away, Villa at home, Brighton away. Wally Daf Zell says, can you guys do a video of keeper sell of the United squad at the end of the season? Yeah, we can. I don't see why not. We can definitely give you guys that. Uh, Adam says... <laughs> Seeing De Gea after watching guys like Courtois, Mania, and Ederson this week makes me want to cry. <laughs> I, I did. I repeat those sentiments. Absolutely. Uh, stat for you guys from Ryan. Uh, no player has made more errors leading to a goal across all competitions than David De Gea since the start of last season. I'm so... What? I didn't know that. <laughs> what? <Whoa. laughs> Swear down. Oh. <laughs> All I'm going to say, bro, is that 10-minute compilation of David De Gea on Twitter. Go add another 15 seconds of that bro. shit tonight, bro. Re-up, re-up, re-up. We can give you 10 minutes from this season alone, bro. 10 season. <laughs> and then finally, Aran says, big up you two guys. Love the content. Well, that was just an hour, guys, of Manchester United <laughs> versus Sevilla. Cam, I guess the one positive from this is we don't got to cover the Europa League anymore this season. <laughs> uh, mate. Uh, but that means we have to speak about my United more. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's let me see what the other Europa League result before we quickly round up the Champions League. Yeah. Um, Juventus are through. Leverkusen are through. Roma are through. So really and truly, all the big dogs are through, but but Man United. But are we really big dogs at this point? It's been ten years of getting spanked. Stevia have are definitely a bit more big dogs in Europe than Man United at the moment. So really and truly, all the big dogs went through: Roma, Leverkusen, Sevilla, and, and Juventus. Yeah, we're just the only count. Yeah, we're one of the yeah. All the big dogs went through. Who do you see winning the competition from here? Sevilla. Really? Yeah. Roma Sevilla final. Jose, who yo Jose for Sevilla football heritage. Imagine he beats Sevilla love, Roma. I would love Roma to win it. I would love Roma to win it. Yeah, but, same. yeah, I would love Roma to win. I'm supporting Roma for the rest of the competition. Why well, you're not supporting Max Ooh. Allegri and Juventus? Allegri, Ooh. it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But as Shout long out as Alonso Jose... too. Shout out Shabi Alonso too. It's gonna be Alonso versus Mourinho, Master versus Apprentice. That'll be very interesting to watch. As you well. know, Jose doesn't lose European finals. What does he say? Finals are, are not there to be played. Finals are there to be won. Yeah, there we go. I'm supporting Jose through this. Allegri, that's my dog too. Yeah, listen, but I think Sevilla, they got that heritage in it, but nah. I, I think, honestly, bro, I think a team will embarrass Sevilla, bro. I really don't, like, I, I, I think respect what they've done in this competition, but I think over these two legs, it's more us being bad than them being good. Mm. I don't know if Juve are the team to expose them, but I think I don't think they make it to the final. I think Roma could do it, though. I'm with you about Mourinho, and I hope they do as well. I'll be supporting Roma as well. Uh, mm. Let's talk about a little bit of Champions League. Obviously, we kind of held that off the last two days to kind of save it for this show. Where do you want to start on this one? Because we got the two Milan clubs on one side progressing. We got Manchester City versus Real Madrid, a repeat of last year's semifinal. What's the game that you kind of want to touch on first that we just watched? It's probably to be fair, like all of the all the all of the results were pretty straightforward, um, mm. except from the Milan game. You know what I mean? Was it the Milan? Yeah, Milan was the one that people are still surprised at. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like that one is the one where it was gave us not the biggest shock, but yeah, in a way, it gave us that surprise factor. Do you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Yeah, Milan, Leao's run. He rose. Fair, Talk to fair. me on Leao. Hey, don't just try and... Oh, Leao, yeah, he moved. rose. Here. Talk to me yeah. on Leao. <laughs> I was moved. I was moved. I was moved. Especially when I'm watching Sancho and that at Man United. It's making me think, hmm, okay, maybe, you know what I mean? So maybe Sancho and a, a little 50. Or you can add another, add another two on it as well. You know what I mean? But I'll go two more for y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a... It's a I think Liao's performance was good. I liked that performance. I actually thought, you know, it's funny about that game, yeah? People were talking about Kavara. Obviously, Kavara missed the penalty. But I actually thought he was trying, bro. He was the one that was trying. He was trying to lead the fight. He was actually dribbling. He, I thought he was actually did well, actually, to be honest. But it is what it is. Oshman, I'm good personally. I'm good personally. I don't think he's a Man United striker. I don't think he's a Man United striker, you know what I mean? But I, I've, 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 you know, I've been Harry Kane the whole time. But just looking at his game, I just don't think he's a Manchester United striker. Not for what I personally want. I want some players that are good technically on the ball. He's mid on mm. technically on the ball. Let's keep it a hundred. Good header, but he was waiting for that all game. You know, he was standing at the back post. He was just waiting for that inch perfect cross to come into him and for him to do something. I'm, I'm all right, man. Personally, you know what I mean, but. If he comes, he comes. But if he comes to Man United, we just know we are going to be another transition team. That's what we're going to be. You know what I mean? I want to control all phases of the game, bro. You know what I mean? And I think we can do that with a Harry Kane. But And Harry Kane can do transition as well. We've seen him under Jose. We've seen him under Conte. So why not? But that's not... I don't want to talk about Man United too much. But yeah, poor performance. I think Napoli just... You always talk about heritage. We always talk about heritage. Again, your Champions League heritage. Napoli look like they haven't been there before. Yeah, I mean, I saw the fans crying and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you guys ain't seasoned yet. You guys ain't seasoned yet. You know what I mean? Go win the league for Diego Maradona. Big at yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Let me say this. Uh, I think, oh, okay, Heritage, absolutely. I agree. And we kind of hinted at that when we talked about both Milan clubs. Like, obviously, they've been out of the spotlight for a few years. They've gone through a rough, I, I call it a decade in the desert for the two Milan clubs. What they've gone through the last 10 years is crazy. But um, yeah, of course, that Champions League juice still exists. One thing I will say, though, Napoli, since the international break, since the last one, have been dreadful, right? In the league, they've been dropping points left, right, and center. They actually have a very poor record against Milan 
throughout the season. The first game, they narrowly won it 2-1, narrowly. Then they lost, what, 4-0 in the league at home. Then they basically, I mean, I, I know Osman scored at the end, but they effectively lost both legs of this game as well. Mm-hmm. Milan had their number. I agree with you on Kavarcelia because I actually think football discourse is cooked on Twitter, bro. If it hasn't been cooked, it's absolutely cooked in terms of you see, again, what I tell you about the Champions League, <laughs> players' reputations are basically yeah. defined in one game. You see them for the first time. If they don't exactly match what you want to see from them, you make your opinion on them. And Kavar Shelly, mm-hmm. I think, had a good game, guys. He's not a high-output goal assist kind of player. He's a player that is like a traditional old-school winger. And I actually thought the second leg, yeah. I agree with you. I thought, he was, I thought he was good, but because he doesn't come away with a goal and assist, I don't think he's the person that you should be going to saying, go, go get us a goal, go win us this game. Like he's somebody that's going to create, he's going to try and make things happen. He was trying, he was taking a few shots and stuff. I actually don't think it was, it was that bad of a performance. I see yeah. somebody say, Cam, I prefer it. You see, we had the option to sign Harlan tomorrow. Guys, come on, man. Harlan's generational, bro. Do you know what I mean? That's a generational talent. Cam, if you had the, if you had the option, would, if you had the option to sign Mbappe tomorrow, would you do it for free? No. For free, by the way. Think about that one. No, yeah. <laughs> Not sure he's technical enough. Not sure he's technical enough. <laughs> will, we, will we have enough fluidity in our front three? Right, <laughs> I, don't know, man. I think it'll only work if Martial's the glue. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 Mbappe, but Martial's the stay as the glue. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to say this on Milan too, though. Milan deserved absolutely all their flowers because they've had a rough season in, in uh, Serie A. And actually, with Juventus's ban being reversed, I think temporarily for now, Milan are actually fifth in Serie A right now. So it's been a rough season. But one thing I, I've said throughout the year is that, guys, people talk about Leal, people talk about Teo Hernandez, but the most valuable player on this Milan team is Mike Magna. And Milan's worst period throughout this season came when Mike Magna missed like four months of the season. bro. He missed the World Cup and he missed about four months of the season. Their defense was absolutely awful. Like you talk about cool. difference in quality. Cool. Manian to Tatarasano, who was their backup, is like one of the biggest downgrades in football. The guy was a hologram in goal, but he has come back and has been insane. That's the only word I can use to describe how good Manian has been in these two legs and how good he was in the second leg against Spurs. Saved them time after time after time in the first leg. Came up with some huge saves himself in the second leg. Obviously saves Cavaracelio's penalty. For my reckoning, he's a top three goalkeeper in the world, bro. You talk about what you need to be great at to be a modern day great goalkeeper. He ticks off every single box, one after the other after the other. But one thing about me for Milan, talk about Leao, you talk about Hernandez, you talk about Mania. I think they're such a likable team, bro. I don't think they have extremely high quality throughout the team. Like there are a few players that, look, they're not some of, the, of Europe's best. Let's call it uh, what it is. But I love the unity that what they, they play with. I love the, the spirit which would they play with. They defend well. They defend strong. They, they fight for each other. You have players like Benacer, Tonali, Tomori. They fight for the team. Calabria. They, they, they know what it means to play for AC Milan. I go back to United's performance. You don't have those intangibles, which, again, even at the base level, if you're not good enough, you at least show that kind of spirit. So I give full credit to Milan. I think they absolutely deserve to be in the next round. And I'm happy to see a team of that stature, that status, that heritage, be back where they, they belong. Because the last time Milan were in a Champions League semifinal, it was 2007, the last time they won the competition. That's outrageous for a team of this, of this status. So full credit mm-hmm. to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are like well, I think Tomori, big up Tomori as well, man. You know what I mean? Locked up people, yeah. In my, yeah, he locked yeah. up Osimhen. And it was a shame that Osimhen, well, for him, that he ended up getting a goal, but he had a great performance. And you know what? It's one of those ones where, like, big him up, man, just in general, bro. Like, you got to think, the guy got, not released, he got sold from his childhood club, the club that he came through, the academy. Some people could be thinking, whatever, got sent abroad to Italy. Milan, big club, and he's he's rose to that. You know what I mean? He's a league champion with them now. He's a Champions League semi-finalist. But just on a side note, therefore want to big up Tomori, man. That's 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 a nice story for him, bro. And it'll be good to see him get to a final or whatever. Yeah, you know I mean Milan Inter is gonna be nice. I want Milan to go through personally. I want Milan to go through, and it'll be a night, it'll be nice, man. On the other side, we've got the the big boys, man. You know what I mean? Now <laughs> if you want to get through. If you want to win the Champions League, you got to get through the juggernauts, bro. It's that's that's just the facts. Now, it's proven. If you want to win things, you got to get through Real Madrid, bro. Yeah, I mean, you got to get through them. And Man City are on fire. You know, what I mean, the goal that Haaland scored yesterday. Yes, Upa Meccano slipped, but it's the it's the it's the confidence, bro. It's the confidence that he has, bro. You know, what I mean, he missed the penalty. I think he was a bit. I think nerves got to him a little bit. The Bayern fans were all over him. You know, what I mean. But he took that goal so well. And that's the difference with Man City this season. The difference as well, Man City, is that 
He's a one-man transition army, bro. He's a one-man transition army. Now they can just fling that ball up there when they need to. And we'll link you when we need to link you, Harlan. Go and just do what you need to do. Mm. That is the difference now. That was a difference between... That is the kind of upgrade in this kind of... From what Aguero was. Because Aguero was great, but Aguero, he had his moments, whatever. But under Pep, he was more sort of he'll bury goals in the box and stuff. You won't do a transition and it's all going to be Sergio Aguero running that transition. Now, bro, Haaland, perfect. He's a fright train, bro. He's a fright train. He causes havoc, bro. You know what I mean? And the thing is, you know, a lot of people, they get called chaos players. Kolo Moani, Oshiman, chaos players. But he is not, oh, he's chaos and deadly. He will punish you with all this chaos. It's not just, oh, chaos, chaos. He will punish you, bro. So, bro, it's a problem. And it's going to be a problem for Real Madrid. That's the thing of Haaland too, right? You talk about his, his threat and transition. I agree. Bar Mbappe, Haaland is the best transition player in the world, in my opinion, in terms of, bro, he's a one-man counterattack. That's the craziest part, bro. We haven't, I don't, I still don't think we've seen the best of Haaland in a Manchester City kit. Yeah, I, I still is, think, yeah. bro, bro yeah, yeah, Nunez is the ultimate chaos player. But yeah. <laughs> how often do we get to see Erling Haaland really in transition at Manchester City? Not that often, just because of the way teams play against them. And that's my whole point. He's scoring this many goals. He's this effective, and he still probably hasn't unlocked or City haven't unlocked the most potent part of his game: his ability in transition to kill teams. The guy is a fright trainer. That's why Manchester City are my pick to win this entire tournament because I, I keep going back to that tie against Real Madrid. We all talk about the mm-hmm. Rodrigo goals and Benzema's uh, amazing campaign that he had, but. If City just have a killer up front last season, mm. they kill off Real Madrid. Right, before bro, it even gets a chance to get to the... You can't see on Real, man. Listen, before Bayern went and gassed me up at the flipping uh, Classica, I had Real Madrid winning this competition. So, guys, can I go back to my original... No, my original... no, no, no. no. <laughs> stay <laughs> on that <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You stay with PSG, mate. You stay with your no, PSG no, stars, bro. Bro, I, 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 I found a screenshot of me saying Manchester City... On podcasts, on Twitter, no. I've been Manchester City winning the Champions League all season long. All hey, season people, long. Don't try people, that. People, I, the Classica gassed me. I was at the, the Classica. Come on, man. You guys you guys know you were killed to go to the, the Classica. Let me go back to my original shout of Real Madrid, bro. I'm, t- I'm going back to my original shout. So when it happens, I can say I told, man. Do so you think Real Madrid will beat... For sure, you think they'll beat them against Manchester City? No, I'm not for sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. No for sure about it. For nothing. me, Cam, I'm going I'm to put my rep on the line here. I for sure think Manchester City are beating Real Madrid. Fez, 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 Fez. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stick with Real Madrid, but City. I'm not even saying it confidently. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it confidently, but Real Madrid are just, just Real Madrid. They are just Real Madrid, and they always have someone rise when they need them to rise. Man, you see Rodrigo yesterday. You see, you see Valverde yesterday. That was a quiet game for Madrid. That was a quiet game for Cruz, a, a very mid game for Benzema, a, a decent game for Vinny. But what they always have somebody in these competitions that will get them through. Now we even forget Rodrigo is the one that even started the comeback against Chelsea last season. They find a way, and they are just as good off the ball as they are on the ball. So Man City is going to be very interesting to see how Manchester City set up against them. You know what I mean? Because on that count of Vinny. With a kanji out wide, Ooh, yeah, but he can cook, bro. He can cook. That's true. That's true. Benzema is clinical. He's deadly. It's not going to be easy, man. Every single year, bro, Lies, we are here. Real Madrid now. They're not going to do it. What's their style of play? I said every time. Yeah, it's true. I said every what time. Identity? What's their style of play? What? And every single year, they are there, bro. So mm. I'm going to stick with Real Madrid. But it's not going to be easy at all. It's gonna I, be I, I just think, look, we've said this so many times, right? Like, oh... They're, look, I'm going to bring it back to basketball. I'm a Toronto Raptors fan, right? And I know every single year, even when we got Kawhi, it was, yo, Toronto, they're just not built to win the NBA, bro. Like, they, it's in their DNA to choke it. They're, they just can't do it. And we saw Kawhi at Toronto, bro. He was the difference in that. I just think with Manchester City, bro, you said it yourself the other day, Cam. They are going to win it eventually. Eventually, th- this curse or this this blip of theirs is going to end, and I just think it's this year, bro. I, I said from the start, not Man. even when I was saying City this is the weakest they've been ever. The competition around Europe is as weak as it has ever been. The top teams are all in decline. Mm-hmm. I think it's City's to lose this year, bro. But I, I have to respect Real Madrid as well. I'm with you, bro. Obviously, they have players that they rise when they need to. 
They have they, they're clutch. They know how to suffer without the ball. They know how to kill you in in transition in, in the dying moment. So I have to give them respect. But I got City this year. Let's see, man. Let's see. Let's see. It's gonna be massive, man. It's gonna be massive. But yeah, man, that's a good tie. Milan derby. Let's see if we can try and get. We're trying to go there anyway. We're trying to see what we can I do. I will be yeah, there. Man. I will be there. No, I already. I went on both sites, Inter site and AC site. I was like, notify me when tickets are available. <laughs> Yeah, let's try and get out there. So that'll be fun, man. But yeah, mm. good ties, man. But listen, I'm tired of talking about football now, man. I'm I was going to say, but before we go, we got to get, bro, we talked about every team bar Inter. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I didn't really be creating Inter, I'll be honest, bro. I, I watched them. Bro. Yesterday, that game had like the craziest finishes I've oh, ever seen. Opa, 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 you don't run. You. I talked about him yesterday, the... last week. Come on, no, no, bro. What do you want? Man. He doubled up. He doubled up. He doubled up. He doubled up, bro. Upa, talk to me. You just make it. You just make it fast. Two minutes. What, what can I say, bro? It's the same. If you want my opinions on Upa Kano, go back to last week, bro. Two minutes. Nah, nah. I need to hear again. I need to hear again. What do you think about? I have nothing, to, bro. This guy's just trying to. He's just trying to take me out, bro. I already gave you, you my thoughts on Upa Kano, bro. I I said it last week. I made him. I made him my chump of the week, or whatever you guys call it on on stoppage time, bro. I got nothing else to say. Bro, that is single-handedly the what uh, the hey I tried this thing, but that was single-handedly the worst two-leg fixture from a player I've ever seen in my life. Ever. Probably that is a disaster for the ages. But listen, we won't get on too much about that. You know, what I mean, let's 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 talk about um what are you saying, Inter man? Yeah, Inter. No, look, I'm happy Inter went through. Benfica, another one, the hipsters pick. They were my pick to actually go through. But as we always say, heritage finds a way of creeping through eventually. But Inter, I can't lie, Cam. I would be very surprised if they beat Milan. And I would give them next to no hope whatsoever against Manchester City or against Real Madrid. I think it's a nice story. But, bro, this is a team that, like, bar the Champions League, right? They're, like, winless in seven or eight games in the Serie A, bro. Like, they are in dreadful form. They're not a great team. So I would be extremely extremely shocked to see them beat Milan and I would give them close to zero chance against Real Madrid or City. This might get clipped mm -hmm. up if the unlikely happens, but I don't see how it happens, bro. It's a very average team, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see, man. Let's see, let's see, bro. Yeah, you know I'm saying? People are onto you about for bigging up Manchester United winning the Carabao Cup, man. You need to go clap back, bro, on Twitter. I don't give a shit, bro. Twitter, yeah, I mean, they take they, they, They're taking this as a, as a win because you said Ten Hag is doing a good job. People are crazy, man. People are crazy. Let them hate, bro. Let them hate. Yeah. yeah Anyways, any last thoughts? Anything you want to add before we sign off? Um, bro, Brighton. Good luck. That's all, really. Good luck. But big up everyone that's been inside. We've had over a thousand the whole time. Make sure you hit the likes on the way out. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on the notifications as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're regular content. So, guys, if you're new here, stick around, bruv. Stick around. A lot of people have been inside. Of course, you guys love to come on my United lose, but it's okay. It's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay. Hopefully, we never give you a reason to come back. You know what I mean? But <laughs> let's see. Let's see, bro. But, yeah, big up everyone that's been inside, man. Absolutely. And listen, all guys, you people, make... all you people in that last episode that were saying I'm reactionary and I'm doing too much, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go back to comment anyway. So I'll be back to comment on those video on the video last video. It is what it is. We've had over a thousand people in the stream. I see people are starting to dip. Do not dip without liking the video. Do not dip without subscribing if you aren't subscribed, because I'll be surprised if all 1,000 plus of you guys are all subscribed. So make sure you guys do that, guys. I see a lot of you guys saying, love you guys, great content. We love the content you do. Support us, bro. Support us. We can only go as far as you guys take us. So make sure you like the stream. Make sure you guys share, uh, subscribe to the channel. Share it with all your friends if they're looking for consistent football content, top football content, Ooh. more than just your everyday narratives. Make sure you subscribe. Oh, yeah. Talk about race. Top goal. When I come off here, I'm about to call him. I'm on, really? my, head. I'm on my feet applauding, bro. Now, listen, everybody, put your claps. Put your claps in there. Please put your claps in the comment. Deckers, they laughed at him because they think he's overpriced. 
people are we gonna give this guy a standing ovation now bro (laughs) people people, listen i'm I'm on my feet applauding mate i'm on my i'm on my feet applauding i was gonna say that shot is crazy Listen, if Yaya, if Yaya Torre scored that no, goal, I don't do that. Don't re- do that. No, 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 no. If Yaya Torre scored that goal, we'll be repeating that goals for years to come. He won the first tackle. Then it became a mix-up. He no, he he won the first tackle, passed it. It became a mix-up. He got the second. He drove the team all the way up the pitch. Yeah, went right, took it to his left, buried it with his left foot. Don't play with him, bro. Don't play with him. Don't play with him. Leading West Ham through in Europe again. Well done, man. Well done. People, don't try and say don't talk on it. If Yaya Torre scored that goal, you will be gassed, bro. That was a Yaya Torre S goal. Don't lie to me. It's okay. Don't lie to me, bro. It's a Yaya Torre esque goal. And look. Yaya Torre went to, to Declan Rice's house. Oh, come on. He went to, but he did, though. Yaya went to Declan Rice's house and they had conversations. Yeah, you know I mean, tutelage. Tutelage. Don't, this, I won't reveal all the secrets, man. I won't reveal all the secrets. Great episode, people. Thank you very much. Hey, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys soon, man. Peace. Big up.